especially for women. This is also a unique leave benefit for uh, women employee, for women employees. The legal basis is found in Republic Act 9710. So for purposes of coverage, any female employee, regardless of age, civil or uncivil status, whether married or single, shall be entitled to a special leave benefit under such terms and conditions and provided herein. And if I may add, uh, this kind of benefit does not distinguish with respect to the employment status of the woman employee. Okay, although there are requirements in terms of uh, minimum number of months that he that she must have already rendered. So let's we will discuss that in a while. So the first, let's start with the definition of uh, gynecological disorders because the whole purpose of this the benefit is that the woman employee will be undergoing a surgery uh, related to gynecological disorders. So it's critical that we understand the meaning of gynecological disorders. So gynecological disorders refer to disorders that would require surgical procedures such as but not limited to dilation and carotage and those involving female reproductive organs such as the vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, breast, adnexa, and pelvic floor as certified by a competent competent physician, which will also include hysterectomy, ovarectomy, and mastectomy. So for clarity or for purposes of ensuring that it is a gynecological disorder, it would be best to uh, verify with a competent physician. Now, in terms of proof or on the side of the woman employee, it would also be best that she make a uh, or or ask a formal question with respect to her uh, doctor whether the disorder that she is experiencing would fall under this category in order for her to avail of the benefit. And any documentation that she may request from the doctor or the hospital, it will be best to reflect the two words gynecological disorder in order to support her claim for this benefit. Now, the conditions for entitlement. Number one, the woman employee has rendered at least six continuous aggregate employment service for the last 12 months prior to surgery. So it only requires at least six months of continuous aggregate employment service, unlike other benefits which require at least uh, 12 months or a year. In this case, it's just six months. So in that six-month period, again, there's no distinguish, there's no distinction whether the employee would be a regular or, or an unregular employee. So there are cases where there are, for instance, casual employees who are provided for a 12-month employment contract, then they would be covered by this benefit. The same goes for project employee, seasonal employees, and fixed employees. Now, for probationary employees, uh, take note that the maximum uh, employment period of a probationary employee is 180 calendar days. So that would depend if uh, he or she would pass his or her regularization. If she does not uh, pass and uh, her last on her last day, basically she would no longer be continuing with her employment and she would not be able to avail of this uh, benefit. Number two, she has filed an application for special leave with her employer, leave with her employer within a reasonable period of time from the expected date of surgery or within such period as may be provided by company rules and regulations or collective bargaining agreement. So again, anything that has to do with filing a leave application or the rules or procedures with respect to filing a notice, it is highly and strongly recommended that the employer come out with a company policy in order to regulate and properly inform everyone in the workforce on how to properly do it and what timelines to observe. Number three, she has undergone surgery due to gynecological disorders as certified by a competent physician. So again, with respect to the woman employee, she should be ensuring that she is gathering sufficient documentation 
in order to prove that she is undergoing or has undergone surgery due to gynecological disorders in order to be able to properly uh, file a claim for this benefit or be entitled to this uh, benefit. On the part of the employer, if the employer is able to uh, determine that sufficient documentation has been presented, then the employer should be able to, uh, how to say, this grant this benefit. Take note that this benefit is very different from maternity leave. The amount to be paid is coming out from the pockets of the employer and not reimbursable on the part of the SSS. Unlike maternity leave where um, a portion of the maternity leave is reimbursable by the SSS. Now, what constitutes the special leave benefit? The covered woman employee is entitled to the special leave benefit of two months with full pay based on her gross, comp gross monthly compensation. Gross monthly compensation refers to the monthly basic pay plus mandatory allowances fixed by the regional wage board. So for two months, she can take a leave and she would be still paid despite her um, not uh, doing any work. Again, the amount of money is coming from the pockets of the employer and uh, it is not reimbursable uh, with the SSS, at least with the current laws and regulations we have right now. It might change or be uh, subject to improvement later on, but currently that is the case. Usage. The special leave shall be granted to the qualified employee after she has gone surgery without prejudice to an employer allowing an employee to receive her pay or during the surgery. Again, it's possible that the employer come up with a policy. Anything favorable to the employee with respect to labor standards, it will be uh, considered valid. In this case, the default is that the leave is granted to the employee after the surgery is, surgery is uh, conducted. But it is possible through a company policy that the woman employee would be able to receive the benefit even before or during her surgery. Uh, finally, on the part of non-conversion to cash, the special leave shall be non-cumulative or non-convertible cash. Non-convertible, so it cannot be converted to cash by the end of the year if not used because, again, the purpose of this benefit is for the woman employee to be able to recover after undergoing surgery due to gynecological disorders. Or non-cumulative, meaning you cannot add it. You cannot reserve the leave benefits now and then add it to the next year or the next incident when uh, it might apply again. Of course, that is the general rule or the default because uh, we have here a limitation which provides for an exception unless otherwise provided by a collective bargain agreement. So it's possible that the CBA might have, have a provision wherein the... Uh, special leave for women may be convertible to cash or uh, cumulative, meaning the woman employee would decide not to use it right now. But perhaps in the future, if there is a similar incident that she that would require surgery due to gynecological disorder, she might add on the two months to the current two months, which will result in four months uh, leave. Again, if there is a provision in the collective bargain agreement, if not, then we are... Uh, dealing with the default rules as we discussed uh, right now.